their citizens. North Korea just evacuated most people out of their capital city. This is serious. And you've got power-tripping loons in North Korea that can't even build an automobile and can't even keep electricity on but in two cities. But they've got a brainwashed mass of slaves that'll do whatever they're told in human wave attacks. And they've had a dictatorship since before the Korean War that killed over a million people on both sides. More bombs were dropped on North Korea in the Korean War, the Korea police action, as it was called by the UN, than were dropped in all the Pacific theater in World War II. So the Koreans are just kept in fear, ready for the U.S. to invade any minute, as they're told from birth to death, from cradle to grave, from the time they come out of their mother's womb to the time they get put six feet under. China warns World War III is inevitable as North Korea prepares latest nuke test. So we're in a massive countdown here. So let's look it up. When do they, let's look up actually. I meant to do this last night, but forgot to. Can you guys do some research? My great team is even better at research than I run on the show. They do a great job there as well. But if the whole research team in there can look at past atomic tests, there's been six since Kim Jong-un ascended the communist throne of the people. Total oxymoron, but that's how it always works. When did they test them last time? During the day, late at night? Seems like sometimes it's the middle of the night here, but that's in the middle of the day there. And that's where the time zones basically... What time is it in North Korea right now? Because we're talking in 12, 12 hours or how long, most of their day's already going to be up over there. They're 13 hours ahead of us. So 13 hours from now, it'll be almost tomorrow here. So in the middle of the night tonight, when you tuck your children in to go to bed, from any time on then, they can do the test. In fact, sooner. If they're 13 hours ahead, then it's, it's almost the 15th there right now. So any time in the next 24 hours or so, they detonate this nuclear weapon, and there's been rumblings that Trump might strike it. And I understand why we haven't struck him before, because we don't have a nuclear war, but Kim Jong-un keeps getting better and better weapons, better and better missiles. Every week the last few months, he fires a missile from North Korea, 90 kilometers over, and has high-powered missiles with conventional payloads to explode right off the Japanese coast, menacing them, saying, we'll launch nerve gas, we'll launch atomic weapons, we'll nuke you. If, if one shot gets fired by South Korea on the DMC, if anything happens, if we hear a car backfire, we are going to unleash nuclear weapons on Japan, nuclear weapons on South Korea, conventional artillery barrage of 100,000 pieces of artillery. They don't have electricity, but they got artillery like any other knuckle-dragon communist hellhole. And then meanwhile, right next door, South Korea is 40 times more prosperous than one of the richest countries in the world, and they never had any freedom until the United States liberated them. They never had freedom. Koreans were always slaves. And now they get 50-something years of somewhat freedom, and they're the apple of the world's eye when it comes to so many things. There you go. Oh, but MIT is teaching high school and elementary school and middle school teachers how to teach communism to your class. Published by MIT. That's the technology we teach in America now. We invented the internet, but now, now we teach how to be good little communists. It's amazing. So, China warns World War III is inevitable as North Korea prepares latest nuke test. We will go to war if they choose. North Korea warns aggressive Trump not to, prom to provoke the North Korean capital. 
Breaking, Japan preparing to evacuate 60,000 citizens from South Korea. Now, this is a story from the UK Express that is, is hype, and I'm not defending Trump. I've, I've looked at the already troop developments, the troop movements that were ordered under Obama that are continuing. Donald Trump edges closer to Russia. U.S. soldiers land in Europe after Afghan Moab. Donald Trump has sent U.S. military to Poland to joint NATO multinational battalion just after the U.S. president dropped the mother of all bombs, the Moab, on Afghanistan. Those troop deployments are rotations. They were already set. Obama put the order in to increase troops by at least 10,000 in the middle of last year. Remember that? Well, that's part of these rotations now taking place. Tillerson has said that the U.S.-Russian relations have hit bottom. That's a diplomatic way, in, in my research view, it's my opinion, researched opinion, to then say they need to get better, we've hit bottom, to shut down all the claims we're soft on Russia, saying we've hit bottom, now let's come back up. And, of course, that's what he said in the speech as well. Trump may send 50,000 troops to Syria. Well, I told you a couple weeks ago that from our sources, but also MSM admits it, they just don't say the numbers, there's well over 10,000 troops just the last month that have been injected into Iraq and into Syria. And right there in the border region, and they're forcing al-Qaeda, ISIS out. So that's all part of this escalation. Trump says it's just so that we can defeat al-Qaeda and ISIS and have their flank covered. I'll take that at face value because the president's done most of what he said he would do. But I got to tell you, I don't like it, and I'm watching it very, very closely because that makes Iraq and Afghanistan that are horrible quagmires. Afghanistan is the known definition of a quagmire in the encyclopedia. This will be much, much worse than that. So that's just some of what we've got here, and I'm going to cover a lot more when we come back from break. But undoubtedly, when I go to bed tonight, While I'm sitting here right now, I mean, we're talking about an hour or so, it's going to be the new day over in the Korean Peninsula in the South China Sea in Japan and China. How this works is there's different angles, but they nuke test, and then they start preparing to fire more rockets into the South China Sea, something they said they're getting ready to do. In fact, they told U.S. media, North Korea did yesterday, their state-run media said, prepare for a big event in the next 24 hours. Well, we're now 24 hours later. And I looked at that and I thought, 24 hours, that's the 14th, not the 15th. But when they said it, it was basically 24 hours for them. Because right now, as we speak in the next hour or so, it's going to be tomorrow there. So I thought, the big events on the 15th, why would they say it'd be today? And I went, oh, we're on the other side of the world. That's right. So starting basically right now, that lunatic on a power trip is sitting on top of a bunch of atomic weapons and delivery systems that can hit Japan, South Korea, China, you name it. And that's why China has said, we need to de-escalate this right now and North Korea, turn back your coal, your main export, and, and we may have to nuke you if you test a nuke. We don't know the deal behind the scenes with Trump and the Chinese dictator. But they've signaled that maybe Trump's going to sit back and the Chinese are going to hit North Korea. And the reason that the clock's ticking on this is they're getting better and better weapons. They're getting better missiles. So we just can't sit there and leave it alone anymore. That's why this is coming to a head. China warns World War III is inevitable as North Korea prepares latest nuke test. Daily Express, Pyongyang, or however you say it, playing with fire. Trump prepared to intervene. World War III is near. Officials in China have warned as North Korea prepares for yet another nuclear missile test, and the U.S. and Donald Trump uh, are poised to intervene. Now, the good news is Trump is signaling that he probably won't respond to a nuclear test, but if they fire another missile and then it crashes a couple miles off the coast of Japan and almost kills people in fishing boats, this happened multiple times, they're going to have to respond. Because he keeps threatening to put atomic weapons or nerve gas on top of them. You, you can't just sit there with a gun firing across your neighbor's yard when they're out there, you know, mowing the grass or whatever. And that's basically what Kim Jong-un's doing. I don't particularly want Trump to strike, but what are you supposed to do 
when we have defense treaties with Japan, when they're getting upset, and then China's gotten so belligerent, us letting North Korea run around and do all this, that they're taking over the South China Sea. So this is Trump reasserting American sovereignty and dominance in our with our key trading partners. We're going to open the phones up and get your take on how you think Trump is handling this. When we come back in the next segment, China calls for halt to U.S.-North Korea tensions. The media had spun this saying, oh, North Korea says there's a big event coming the next day. And then I guess it was, uh, Daria pointed this out to me, it was a street opening. So, so they hyped it like a big event was coming. There's other big events too, the nuclear test. They've talked about that for a long time, but uh, the, our media ran with this. So that's an example of how you get more information. Concerns have been growing that North Korea could soon conduct a six nuclear test or more missile launches